My name's Paul Connor, I'm a photographer with the Sunday Times, um, and I've, for the last 17 years, really been specialising in conflict photography and filmmaking. I think at heart, as I said in the talk, you know, we're all storytellers at heart, and you know, I think over the years my speciality, so to speak, has become um, conflict, but not conflict for conflict's sake, it's getting to the bottom, you know, at the, at the you know, we all see these images of the Gulf War where you see a cruise missile popping down a chimney and it all seems very clean and clinical and almost like no damage is done. But, you know, in reality, they're the, the images we're given. You know, at the other end of that are the people who are, who are actually suffering the, the, the effects of the war. And I think there's a, a group of journalists, you know, who, who, who want to get them stories out. Uh, yeah, I'm not so, ever so concerned with the great big political overview of the situation, you know, there are other people far better at that analysis. You know, my um, desire is to get to the the end of the of the people who, who actually suffer the consequences, and and not the politicians who discuss. Um, and you know, and with Marie, you know, we a nice little team. We found that we both that was both our desire to get to the people at the at the lower end of the scale. And and those are the those are the the stories that highlight what war is actually like, um, and not the, the the bigger scale geopolitical impacts. It's the the impact of the people, who them, so seemingly benign pictures, of the bombs landing. In the other end of the story, there are people on the ground there, and they're mostly civilians, and mostly women and children and old men. So that's. That's the desire, is to tell their stories and get their stories out and, and give them some sort of voice in the, in the world. You can never really be detached. I mean, some of the, 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 the more gruesome aspects, which you, you see a lot of, um, my defence mechanism as being a photographer, I'm, I'm kind of one step removed in that, in the sense that I've got a camera and a lens and I'm looking through it. And, and in, in that situation, then you start worrying about the light, the, you know, your focus, whether you're telling the truth capturing the scene accurately. Um, so that is a degree of detachment, but you know, inevitably you put the camera down and then you know, you get the, the full impact. And uh, my, I always feel sorry for reporters who just have to stand there with a pen and a piece of paper and actually just look at some of the stuff we have to see without that small degree of protection. I always think that they have a rougher end than photographers who are doing something quite technical as well as you know, as being there, and, and so that is my only degree of protection. But you can't detach from it. They're real people, you know, and they're the people you care about. That's why you're there. And um, so when you see some of the the, the the horrors of war, you you can't detach. I, I detach in the sense that I never um, look at kids who have been killed or injured and put the faces of my own kids there because that's kind of fatal. If you do that, you know, you really do become um, too too involved and it can be the wrong move really so I do detach me, me life back in England at the time you know we almost complete switch off because if you start comparing the two it can be um, it's a dangerous game to play because you know the, then um, the emotion comes in you have to keep that emotion out to just be able to function whereas with other forms of journalism you, you know you, you're told to go you're going to go in Wales for a week in two weeks' time doing a shoot. With ours, it's the phone goes and it's the picture desk and they say, Paul, Libya, now. And they've got a flight booked. And, and you literally have a bag standing by. You throw a few pairs of socks in and you pick your bag up and say, I've got to be at Bristol Airport in two and a half hours. I'm going to Libya. So the, it's never easy. It's, it's never, you feel like you're re leaving a trail of emotional wreckage behind because it's such short notice. Um, and one minute you're there being a dad and doing your thing, and the next minute you're all of a sudden you're thinking, you know, you've got to think days ahead. You've got to think, right, I've got to get to this country. I've got to get in with satellite phones. How am I going to do that? They don't like them there. I've got to find a gun smuggler to get me across the border. So while you're packing and everyone's going, where are you going? Your man's on, you know, have I got enough money to bribe the smugglers and that? And so it's, it's almost an instant detachment because, you know, you've got to move fast. Um, so it's a, a really difficult phase, that part. And, you know, you only ever really 
because you, you've got to be aware of what, what you're doing to people, you know, that disappearing and the fear that, you know, you're going off into another terrible place, whilst at the same time getting make sure you've got everything. And it's when you drive off, you know, and you see them all kind of waving you goodbye, that you go, oh, that was a, a hard and harsh thing to do, to leave so quickly. But, you know, in many ways, it's a relief to get out of that phase, you know, where you can just concentrate and then on what you've got to do um, it's, it's always difficult it never gets easier in fact every time you do it it's slightly worse because you know they, they understand that there's it's another opportunity for you not to come back 